Hello everyone and welcome to Eorzea Armoire, a series about the background of some of Hydaelyn's more epic and dense weapons, armor, and artifacts. We'll be investigating the lore of these items both within Final Fantasy XIV, the Final Fantasy franchise in general, as well as the amazing and sometimes obscure real world people, events, and artifacts upon which they are based. Verathragna, made by Ahura, gave him the fountains of manliness, the strength of the arms, the health of the whole body, the sturdiness of the whole body, and the eyesight of the carafish that lives beneath the waters and can measure a rippling of the water not thicker than a hair in the Rongo whose ends lie afar, whose depth is a thousand times the height of a man. He alone of living things, he or none, overtakes the flight of an arrow, however well it has been shot. He flies up joyfully at the first break of dawn, wishing the night to be no more, wishing the dawn that has not yet come to come. Verathragna translates as smiting of resistance from the pre-Vedic Avestan language, spoken across the Iranian plateau as early as 1500 BC, and it was the hypostatic name of victory in Zoroastrianism, known also as Veram or Baram. Given that the Avestan language was in use for about a thousand years before an alphabet was developed to record its scriptures, these texts developed as an oral tradition, and so early Zoroastrian material comprises entirely of prayers and hymns. The Yasht is one collection of hymns dedicated to the various spirits of Zoroastrianism, and almost everything we know of Verathragna comes from the Bahram Yasht, comprising of some 60 lines in praise to this spirit of victory. Zarathustra asked Ahura Mazda, Ahura Mazda, most beneficent spirit, maker of the material world, thou holy one, who is the best armed of the heavenly gods? Ahura Mazda answered, it is Verathragna, made by Ahura, Ospitama Zarathustra. Verathragna appears to the prophet Zarathustra or Zoroastra a total of 10 times, always running, respectively as a strong wind, a golden horned bull, a beautiful white horse, a strong and virile camel, a giant killer boar, a beautiful young man of 15, a swift raven, a wild ram, and a man with a golden sword. He is described as the embodiment and potential giver of victory in all things, not just combat, but speech, health, perception, harvest, and sex. It is a fitting epithet for the holy monk, ever at the peak of the DPS food chain. Zarathustra can use a single feather from the raven form of Verathragna to strike terror into and disperse an army, and the monk anima should honestly have a similar effect. If you're uncertain whether your monk worships Verathragna, just ask them how they feel about FF logs. But I believe there is more to this reference than the incredible strength and the piety shared by the monk and their weapon's namesake. Although the eschatology of Zoroastrianism is one in which good ultimately triumphs over evil, good and evil both are in most modern interpretations believed to be direct expressions or emanations of the Zoroastrian creator and one true god, Ahura Mazda. The emanation of order is known as Spenta Mainyu, and that of chaos we have encountered before by both of its names, Angra Mainyu or Ariman. The consequence here is that unlike Abrahamic monotheisms, duality for the Zoroastrian is not just part of the universe, it is part of God itself. This theme is consistent with the revelation that the Eorzean monk has faced over the course of Heaven's Ward, and with the way we're beginning to understand the structure of the Final Fantasy XIV universe more broadly. In A Realm Reborn, the Warrior of Light and the supposed last surviving member of the Alamegan Fist of Ralga, Widargelt, labored to open seven chakras, the seventh of which corresponded with the heart of Hydaelyn's ether at Silvertear Falls. We have learned more recently that these seven are only half of the picture, and that unbeknownst to Widargelt, the Fist of Ralga actually comprised of a sect of light and a sect of shadow, that the seven chakras we have been pursuing belong to the former sect, and that monks of light or shadow could only open chakras of the opposite aspect with a kind of confluence produced by a conflict between light and shadow monks. If these sects of light 
and Shadow immediately make you think of the diurnal and nocturnal sects of the Warriors of Light and Darkness, I think we're on the same page. I believe that in these 14 chakras we are seeing another representation of the way that the ethereal sea has been sundered in 14. Seven of Light, Seven of Darkness. In truth, what the monk is doing with their chakras in combat is not so different from a caster. I believe that with each chakra opened, they are allowing the flow of a particular aspect of ether into their body, which they then convert, of course, into kinetic energy. The power that flows into the seventh chakra of light is of the same quality as the astral pole and as the north star or seventh heavenly gate. Perfect astral ether with no elemental discrimination, and the seventh chakra of shadow is the equivalent in the umbral spectrum. The Final Fantasy XIV universe, like Ahura Mazda, comprises of light and shadow in equivalence. And it was by discovering and framing this within their own martial philosophy of life force and chakras that the Fist of Ralga wielded such power. As the Alamegan scholar Eric puts it, in the past, the two sects both belonged to the Fist of Ralga, and their disciples trained beside one another as comrades. And yet, though the techniques they employed were identical, the manner in which they harnessed energy was opposite in nature. It was this difference which gave rise to two aspects of Chakra. Given that Verath Ragna was created by Ahura Mazda, from whom both Angra and Spenta Mainu emanate, light and shadow, order and chaos, it is appropriate that the monk should be capable of harnessing astral and umbral energy in perfect balance before they are worthy of wielding Ahura Mazda's perfect embodiment of victory the Verthragna, and it is appropriate that their animal weapon should take this form. So there's the Verthragna, thanks as always for watching, like and subscribe for more videos, feel free to comment with any thoughts or feedback or requests for future videos, but until next time, I'm Ethis, and this has been Eorzea Armoire.